Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And I just completed the trip that I took to Abilene, Texas. 453 miles there and back. And the blue line that you see on this picture is the route that I took. And I took the same route going there and coming back. And I wanted to offer some more commentary and do a follow-up because I know the, the few speed testing videos that I uploaded didn't tell the entire story. So what I wanted to discuss in, in this review and this follow-up is AT&T did their thing, which I'm sure many of you were going to expect anyway. And that's what we've come to expect from AT&T. I mean, there's been large investments. We got a first net um, investment going on, you know, government reimbursements. So we know AT&T was going to hold strong and they were going to they were going to do what they do. The interesting one for me was T-Mobile. I've taken this same trip twice in 2012 and 2015. T-Mobile had no coverage as soon as I was about, I would say, 30 to 40 miles outside of the El Paso County line, the city limits, it was a wrap. It was all HSPA uh, roaming on AT&T's network from, from there on out. And then what made it even worse for T-Mobile, when they got, when they purchased the band 12, there was a large county right where the uh, split happens, if you've ever been that way, from I-20 and I-10. So if you go I-10 east, you hit the San, you hit San Antonio, you take the twenty Interstate twenty, you head up you head up uh, towards uh, Abilene, and then Dallas is the next biggest metroplex area. There was a large county in that right in that section where T-Mobile had no band twelve even after the purchase. There was just no licenses to purchase there, so they had to literally wait until band seventy one was purchased and t and then until it was time for the phase to be cleared there for them to be able to build out low band coverage to have, you know, to have coverage there. So again, like I mentioned, I hadn't taken this trip since 2015. There were several people that told me that it's now filled in, that it should be good to go. So, you know, as I mentioned in some of the videos that I uploaded, you know, to no surprise now, it, it is covered it it was covered i i was impressed i had to see it for myself to experience it for myself i know some of you told me that that stretch is now covered but i had to see it for myself so again driving i10 all the way until that split happens it was it was covered and i was pleasantly surprised and impressed i made some calls some of the calls were 20 Plus minutes, it stayed connected. I never once dropped it. Um, I had no data cutouts, and streaming was fine at 1080p. I didn't, I didn't allow it to select 4K because I just think there's a there's a time and place for 4K. I, I, I didn't I didn't need 4K. I'm driving. I'm not looking at anything. I'm just you know streaming music on YouTube. So 1080 was fine for me, and I had no cutouts. No buffering in in that specific well on the on the on the on the trip. Um, what was interesting though, and I wanted to this is why I wanted to follow up and offer more commentary. And I think this is going to surprise and shock a lot of people. But, and again, this is just for this trip. I'm I'm, I'm taking the same trip again next week and i'm going further and on that trip i'll have verizon with me as well to to compare so i can't speak for the rest of the country of course i think the sprint grid is more complementary to t-mobiles than many are anticipating or expecting i truly am starting to believe that just by completing that 453 miles. Now, why do I say that? So that's kind of backtrack to the videos that are uploaded. 
If you noticed on those videos, there, were, there was a lot of LTE on those videos when T-Mobile just stated they cover 92% of, of highways with 5Gs or interstates. And they say that when they go to these conferences and these videos, that they cover 308 million Americans with extended range L, uh, 5G. So here's, here's what's interesting. And this is why I took the same I took the same route back that I did going there. I was going to take a different route back. The reason I didn't because I wanted to see and I wanted to confirm because it hit me. On those stretches that you've seen me connected to LTE in those videos, I was connected to Sprint Keep Sites. And there was about a 30-mile stretch up until Midland, where I was connected to nothing but Sprint Keep Sites. So, why is that? Why am I pointing that out? I believe without those Keep Sites, I would have still had coverage. But I believe T Mobile's site spacing was, was widely spread apart. To where I, I would have likely had data cutouts, calls drop, because then it turns into fair coverage. Now with these Sprint Keep sites, I had none of those issues. I was connected to band 26, band 25. I had band 40, uh, 41 connections. It was a flawless experience during that stretch. So the handoff was smooth. I mean, it was LTE. But I had a much better performance on the coverage. Whereas if I would have just been on the T-Mobile grid, I feel the site spacing would have been spaced 20, 30 miles apart, maybe more, depending. And I think it would have turned into fair coverage. And I think I would have had a worse experience than it being intercepted by these sprint keep sites, which, as I mentioned, I think are going to be very complementary to T-Mobile's grid. Now, I can't speak on this on a nationwide basis, but I am starting to starting to see where this could end up being very, very helpful to T-Mobile in the future. So to kind of offer some, some thoughts to close out the video, now, again, I can just speak for the 453 miles that I drove there and back. But, you know, I had AT&T with me on this trip. And I can say now with confidence, again, just talking about this trip, T-Mobile's coverage is competitive. It rivals AT&T's on this stretch. I can say that now with confidence. Is it, is it better? No, it's not better. But I think once they have the keep sites converted to T-Mobile equipment, fill in, I think they need to fill in about five more sites on that stretch. And they are going to be on par, if not superior, to AT&T's coverage. Now, I'm not saying that AT&T is going to stop or slow down, so their coverage will also get better. But I think T-Mobile is going to have very competitive coverage along those stretches to where even now, I think now, if you got a good deal and you switch to T-Mobile and you're paying less than you are with AT&T or Verizon and you had to travel this stretch as a customer, consumer, average consumer, you would be satisfied um, when you get to your destination. Yeah, I've had... You know, I've had several minutes on HSPA on T-Mobile, uh, you know, in between the mountains. I had I lost service completely for a, a mile or two, but it wasn't a noticeable issue for me. You know, you in those parts, you can go 85 miles um, per hour. I mean, I was through those mountains very quickly and then even within a mile or two after still being in the mountains, I eventually did connect 
to one to two bars back to 5G. So it wasn't a huge cutout. I mean, I've had similar cutouts with AT&T too, just a little bit more with T-Mobile than I did with AT&T. But I think it's, it's starting to really show that they have rivaling coverage, at least for that trip. <clears throat> That's all I can comment on. Um, next week, I'm going, <clears throat> I'll take the same trip, but I'm going about another two and a half to three hours further. And, you know, we'll see what happens. But I, I was pleasantly impressed, uh, mostly surprised. Because as I mentioned, when I took this trip in 2015, it was all HSPA. It was horrible with T-Mobile. It was terrible. And that was my main provider back then. I couldn't stream nothing. And I was driving alone. I couldn't stream anything. I could text. could make a couple calls. That was it. And to now seeing that, I mean, that impressed me. And then I think the Sprint Keep sites... Um, are going to be vital for T-Mobile. I think that that grid is more complementary, as I mentioned, than many that than many are going to realize. And who knows? There may have been more Spring Keep sites that I didn't smoothly hand off to. I mean, again, there's still you know there's still that T-Mobile coverage, and then there's still that Sprint coverage. Yes, they're all on one core, but I think the phone is instructed to connect to uh, you know to 5G more so than LTE. So some of the handoffs may have not been as smooth, but there was still coverage. So there might be more keep sites that I didn't connect to. So again, I think some are going to be pleasantly surprised and shocked um, about this, this better performing coverage. Now, of course, you know, Sprint didn't give T-Mobile a huge expansion in coverage. And I don't think anybody was really anticipating that. But the fact that that coverage is now performing better, I mean, on, the, on those stretches, literally, I was doing 150 plus. Yeah, the uplink was so-so, but that, you know, we've, we've come to know that from Sprint, about four or five megabits a second, but it still got the job done for most of the trip. So make sure you guys sign off in the comment section down below. Just wanted to offer this commentary to let you guys know um, I, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, s some of it, I, I was shocked, especially when I started realizing that I was connecting the Sprint Keep sites when you guys were seeing LTE on the phones when I was uploading the uh, speed testing videos. So again, leave all your comments in the comment section down below. Look forward to reading them. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe for more updates. Um, this is going to be a real busy week and then, you know, heading, uh, traveling more. So definitely stay tuned for more. Thanks again for watching. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.